Hello and welcome to the Grow VC, Everyone Funding Startups Podcast. I'm your new host, Brett Bivens, and I'm excited to be taking the reins from Marcus. I'm also excited to have with us today Carl Esposti, founder of Crowdsourcing.org, which is just a great resource for any and all information regarding the crowdsourcing industry. So, Carl, thanks a lot for being with us today. Uh, my pleasure, Brett. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, too. Um, you know, and I thought maybe we could start off by just having you give an introduction and kind of background about yourself and about crowdsourcing.org and where that all came from. Yes, yeah, certainly. I, um, so I've spent about 25 years uh, in sort of everything sourcing. So my background is working uh, in a, as a management consultant for many years and, and working for some of the top uh, global service providers, working with organizations looking at uh, different uh, sourcing models. So those models would include things like offshore models and captive models and uh, uh, outsourcing models. So a few years ago, uh, I had the good fortune to recognize that crowdsourcing uh, was uh, starting to materialize as a pretty relevant model and saw its potential as being disruptive both uh, to sort of the public sector, the private sector, and, and individuals as they thought about ways of uh, growing and organizing their business. So um, with that in mind, uh, I recognized that um, you know, I, I needed a way of tracking what was going on within the market, and there wasn't a central source of information. Uh, so we invested in uh, an idea to, to build crowdsourcing.org uh, to really provide that sort of central portal. So, you know, any, anything you want to know in terms of uh, uh, who, who's using it, uh, what are the best practices, uh, what are the user case uh, studies, and who are the providers uh, could, could be sourced in uh, one central location. So, um, so uh, we launched our site about a year ago. Um, the sort of agenda behind our business model is, 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 is sort of new, you know, new, news and, uh, and, uh, and uh, topical interest in terms of what's going on in the world of crowdsourcing. Obviously, crowdfunding is a very important uh, element of that. Uh, we've defined about five different uh, fundamental models in terms of how crowdsourcing uh, can be used. Um, crowdfunding is obviously one of the important ones. We also uh, established the fact that um, many people are, are using crowdsourcing as a way of accessing distributed labor groups. Um, another application is that around sort of distributed knowledge, finding and organizing information. Um, there are many tools that are available through crowdsourcing, uh, so we uh, have a specific focus as well in terms of the different platforms and uh, solutions that can be uh, uh, arranged through, uh, uh, through crowdsourcing as well. Great, and I think it's uh, it's incredible how how much in just the recent years crowdsourcing in general has changed the way people go about running their businesses and starting their businesses, and now more recently uh, crowdfunding specifically. So uh, you mentioned that you track the market and your your website's uh, focused on that. What do you feel has been really the impetus behind the the quick growth of crowdfunding in so many markets around the world? Because I know here in the United States, in terms of public consciousness. It's a very new thing, and it's still you know, there's still a lot of people that really are not aware of it yet. Well, um, you know, when we look at crowdfunding, I mean, there are clearly different types of uh, models within crowdfunding itself. So, you know, we we've done a lot of work in terms of sort of trying to define the taxonomy for the industry, and that's across the, the different applications of crowdsourcing and crowdfunding. And when we look at crowdfunding. Uh, we, we've, we've identified there are three fundamental different models. The, the, the first we, we talk about is that of donations, philanthropy, and sponsorship. Uh, so these are these are crowdfunding ma uh, models and crowdfunding platforms that in, that involve uh, you know uh, people requesting uh, contributions, uh, uh, reaching reaching an audience of uh, potential investors, potential um, uh, affiliates, uh, from the point of view of sort of supporting their cause in 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 in. in uh, uh, in response, uh, the, the, the people donating obviously get sort of tokens of uh, appreciation. They may get mentioned. They may get, uh, you know, gifts or, or, or um, as I said, tokens associated with what's being produced through these different sites. The second is, is the, the investment model. Um, the investment model is, is where obviously a, um, somebody requesting the funds uh, makes a pledge to provide the you know, returns with a given level of interest. And then obviously the third model is that of the uh, investment-based models. Those investment-based models include uh, revenue share, profit share, and obviously the equity models that are, are starting to uh, materialize. Yeah, and going, uh, going to your last point about the equity-based models, um, can you talk a little bit about where that's, that type of crowdfunding stands in the United States in terms of uh, government and regulation? And then maybe also touch on why other countries like the Netherlands, for example, have been so much quicker in, in letting that happen in their markets? 
Well, you know, the, the interesting thing will be obviously, you know, how, how much this crowdfunding market scales. I mean, there's obviously a lot of issues to be considered, um, you know, regarding this. I mean, a number of the sites that have, that have attracted the, the highest profile at the moment, you know, obviously the, the Kickstarters and the Indiegogos and the, the Groby Seas and companies of that nature um, are all try, trying to sort of push the, push the boundaries in terms of where this can go. So obviously, uh, as I mentioned before, that you know the, the models that re, you know that that, in, that involve uh, you know an association or, or, or you know, an association between sort of fundraisers and contributors that don't don't require formal contracts and don't require um, you know information to be shared around the sort of financial structures of these organisations um, you know ha- have some potential. Uh, but the really interesting thing is obviously the extent to which crowdfunding can be can, can be used as a way of um, of accessing, uh, you know, people and raising funds for sort of more um, um, investments in terms of sort of seed or, seed or growth money. Um, you know, outside the U.S., uh, certainly, you know, particularly with, with companies like uh, Simbid in, in the Netherlands and uh, and uh, Crowdcube in the U.K., um, they've been able to uh, develop models that actually um, do not need to be regulated. So, uh, for example, in in Holland. Um, the, the model that they've adopted is that um, a, a cooperative organization is set up which becomes basically a vehicle to facilitate the transaction between uh, the uh, contributors and, and the ultimate uh, beneficiary of these funds. Uh, Simbid uh, does not pr- provide sort of financial investment advice um, and therefore just as, 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 as acting in the role of sort of facilitator in order to be able to sort of uh, match make the contributors, the contributors to the, to the, to the requesters, and they actually avoid regulation. So I know, I know that they have um, uh, socialized their model. They've had, um, uh, there's been a tremendous amount of diligence regarding their model. Um, and therefore, um, you know, they've been able to embrace that and get that going. But it's still, still, very, early, still very early ages, uh, early days. And I know Crowdcube in the UK, for example, have now successfully funded two ventures through their uh, equity-based crowdfunding model. I think they've raised seventy-five thousand uh, pounds for one venture and then twenty-five thousand pounds for another. So, again, early early stages, but uh, on, on the way to creating a very interesting and different model for, uh, uh, for, for for fundraising. Now, could you talk a little bit about the the regulation and where that stands in the United States, and then maybe what we can expect in the future going forward? Um, well, there's clearly been, um, you know, there's. Uh, clearly, being made uh, some some inroads being made in terms of um, you know in terms of where this stands. Um, I mean, various petitions have been made, and, and obviously recently in the uh, American Employment Act, the American uh, Jobs Act, um, there was um, uh, you know allusion made to the fact that uh, it was recognised that uh, the regulations maybe needed to be lifted, maybe certain exemptions uh, needed to be allowed to allow companies to to raise money uh, in in a different way. So I think the moves are on in terms of uh, the the relaxation of that market. Um, obviously, it'll take some time in terms of seeing exactly where that's going. But I think there's a tremendous amount of pressure both from the platform owners and potential uh, investors, as well as the people obviously seeking to raise funds. So, uh, again, you know, a, a big mo- a body and a big movement towards that, but certainly as a way of freeing up uh, investment and creating a sort of new capital market for smaller organisations. It's something that over the next few years probably uh, will start making headway. Right. Yeah, and it's obviously a slow kind of long-term process. Um, with anything of that scale, but it is exciting to, to kind of hear that, that the wheels are turning on that and that hopefully sometime in the near future we'll be able to experience this in the United States. Certainly. So, yep. Certainly. Um, now, one other que- another question. Uh, we have a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this podcast, and so I'm curious, just cause as an expert in the industry, what can these entrepreneurs and these companies do to make themselves attractive to the crowd in terms of gaining investment from the crowd? And does this differ at all from kind of what brings success when when they're seeking more traditional investments like angel and VC money? I mean, I think the thing, obviously, you know, one of the issues with crowdfunding as a model, uh, as a model, and this is something that you know we as an industry have to work through, and then platform owners have to work through, is is obviously uh, you know it's it's incredibly appealing to people that are raising money. So it's very easy. Uh, it's very easy for these sites to att- attract a lot of people that are uh, happy to present their proposals, um, you know, regarding the, the money they request and what, what they plan to do with this money. One of the issues is obviously the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the contractual obligation or the financial obligation that the relationship that exists between the person donating the money and the person receiving the money. Um, is is not typically governed by the uh, by the platform owner, and therefore. Um, there's a lot of uh, good faith, basically, that's put on the person raising the money to be uh, both transparent in terms of where that money is uh, invested, 
uh, what the plans are for that money. And, and then obviously 